Hello, I'm Odin, and this time I'm going to do a couple of things a little different. I'm going to make a full cosplay in one video, and it's going to be inflatable. One of the colorful astronauts from the video game Among Us. Felicia agreed to help me with this project. She's been a costume designer and pattern maker for years and has a bachelor's in fine arts for fashion and design. Oh, just rotate them? Yeah. Okay. We don't have to, but I'm just okay. saying. So, um, simple is probably great. Simpler, fewer pieces is probably good and better. Because ultimately. You know, I, I was kind of thinking it might even be possible to almost make it without this as a seam. <laughs> oh, totally, but. Fitting it into fabric would be easier with the seam there. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. We're figuring out how to make an inflatable costume like the T-Rex that's been running around for years, but I want to make a crewmate from Among Us. I've seen a few different Among Us helmet tutorials recently. Jake, over on William Shakespeare Props channel, has made a great helmet from scratch using foam, but all the costumes that I've seen have human proportions, which the game does not. Now, it might just be me, but I want a costume that looks like the art from the game. And I thought that making an inflatable costume would be the right direction to go. I didn't see many tutorials on how to make an inflatable costume. Britt over on Punish Props did a great Dota 2 shoe that is really cool, but I want one that's made from fabric, which is why I asked Felicia to work with me. After talking about sizes and how many panels to use, and keeping the form easy and the shape of the head, we got a small scale pattern made. So we still have our center front seam and we, we still, still have, have our, our center side front, seam. And we still have our side seam and we have our princess seam where we can put our hidden arm pockets. Yes, and they can be stuck in that seam itself. Yeah, and anywhere. And we don't have to cut it all the way down to the leg and it's just one piece. No, that's great. What is the scale? One centimeter on the pattern is one inch for the size that I want. We started to increase the pattern to full size. This is our waist. Which, which is the, this is the waist, right. And, and this is, is the fold in the paper. This is the fold? Right, because we're, if you want, we're looking at, I'm looking at it this way. That, okay, that's where, <laughs> so this is, what, so we would be waist. There's going to be eight sections that make the domed head and upper body, but the legs get simpler. We only need four panels for the legs. So the waistline is where it'll change from eight to four panels. Because it's totally uniform right now. If we were just to do this, we'll sew together a missile. <laughs> but so our center front, and then this is princess side, side front and side seam. So right. CF. Once we had the first panel piece laid out on paper, I created a copy and taped it where there shouldn't be any seam. The paper pattern is good, but I wanted a stronger pattern to work with. I plan on making more than one suit. I traced the pattern onto some heavy cardstock. This stuff is used to protect floors during construction. And I added a three quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. It kind of becomes a big dart in the middle there. And then I cut out the giant pattern. I bought lots of colorful fabric that was lightweight and had a really tight weave because it needs to hold some air inside. So we cut my pattern pieces. The basic suit needs just four of these big panels, but we're gonna need to sew them together and inflate them before we can place the visor. Felicia starts by sewing all the giant darts together. Darts are those pie-shaped cutouts on a single sheet of fabric. All four pieces of fabric have one giant dart, and once the darts are closed, she sews the panels together along the longest edge, the, from the top of the head down to the foot. What? Oh, yeah. They're, it's huge. It's, it's supposed to be because they're they're big beans. <laughs> yeah. I think it's I think it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I hope it's gonna be awesome. I always end up making things too big. That's part of the joke of the show. <laughs> While Felicia starts sewing the two halves together, I trace out a foam circle just big enough to go around my foot. I want the feet to look like the elephant feet that the crew has in the game. We just duct tape them on for now. I might glue them in later, or Velcro, probably contact cement. <laughs> We've got feet, all right. So where did, where did I go with them? Oh, look at it, it has feet, it can walk. It totally got feet, they're round. <laughs> they can't see this, but it's adorable. They walk. <laughs> Good, I got big round feet, I like that. So what I, what I have to blow it up, 
This is a replacement uh, just fan for the T-Rex costumes. It claims it can inflate a T-Rex in about 30 to 45 seconds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it comes with a battery pack for AA batteries, but it's just USB, right? It's six volt. So instead I'm gonna use my USB recharger from my drill. It's all right, go ahead. How are you gonna put it in your pocket? Yeah, I'll put it in my pocket. Okay, you have cargo pants and yeah. pockets, so that will totally work. Yeah, this there's one plenty. Has a clip. Right. No. no. Uh, it'll just, I, it'll last a lot longer. That's brilliant. <laughs> I'm just saying. Sure. I would have gotten this and never thought twice. Well, uh, and even on the uh, on the Amazon page, I talked about just using like the, uh, the phone rechargers because it's just a USB. So the the things that, for yeah, brilliant. the recharging rechargeable battery. I love living in the future. Yes. Sounds like a fan. Can't suck the air out and blow it in. No. <laughs> it looked like it might be working. So I try to put on the suit and we tape the seam shut with a fan put in place. But it's not blowing up. No, I'm not really seeing it do much. To test if it was the fan that just wasn't strong enough, we also used a hair dryer on cool to inflate the suit. And after a couple of minutes, the suit was still not inflating. All right. It's still not really working. No, it's not. And I'm sure that's putting up more force than a second fan would. Yeah, it totally is. All right. The fabric is simply not airtight enough. This purple fabric is not going to work. The next day I went out and bought some different fabric. This is ripstop nylon fabric. It's also labeled as a utility fabric. This is nearly impossible to blow air through. The weave is so tight and it's still very lightweight. I cut out a new set of four pieces from the same pattern but I removed the seam allowance this time. The purple suit was gonna to be too big, so the orange is gonna be a little smaller. I start sewing everything together, starting with the four darts in each panel, and then sewing together the sides, head to toe again. I sew together the front seam, and then just part of the back seam. I leave a space to crawl in so I can try it on. Then I sew the inseam, making the legs. But this time, I reduce the feet a little to be just 12 inch circles. That way I can get two feet cut out from one sheet of floor mat foam. They're still just duct tape on for now. I tape the back of the seam shut and have the fan in place. Let's see if it works any better. Got all the major holes taped up as far as I know. Well, that makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Oh yeah, go! <laughs> You can do it. Okay, the purple never did that. Ripstop nylon is the right choice for fabric. It's actually what I wanted and what I asked for the first time, but the first place I went to just didn't have any. Is it still going? It's still going, it's gonna fall on the floor. It's gonna push itself off onto the floor. I'm okay with that. Okay, it did pumpkin up in the top. That's a bit unfortunate. Just the quality of the craftsmanship of the guy who sold, sewed it. I hung the suit up from the ceiling so I could step back and really see it. He's, no, it's, it's big, but they're big. This is kind of the way they are. In the game, a medical scan tells us that the crewmates are three foot, six inches tall. And this suit is almost double that size. But also, the little guys are twice as tall as they are wide, and this suit is almost a two to one ratio as well. I don't know, I think orange is looking kind of sus. To fix the pumpkin shape problem, I use a dome pattern calculator I found online instead of just making it up. And then I hemmed all the seams on the top of the head. That is so much better. Is it perfect? It's got a point because it's being hung, right? I've, I've got it pinched, I'm hanging it from here. If I wasn't doing that, it probably wouldn't have the same point. But the fan's not strong enough to support it as an empty, empty balloon. Oh, but it is pretty good. 
Yeah, that's fine. Okay, this is a winning argument for putting a circle in. So I think I wanna have that happen. It may not happen to this one. This may end up being just a pokey head. But before I do another color, I think I need to make sure that not only are the points of the pattern changed to this shape for the dome, but we're gonna, I'm gonna have to add in a circle here so this knot doesn't happen at the top. Hi, Hi. thank you for coming back for day three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to see how much resistance if I could. It's got a decent amount of resistance for that little fan. You this... know what's crazy is the seams aren't leaking. Not really, no. I was kind of thinking about that. That's their weak point. If they're going to yeah. leak anywhere, they're going to leak at the seams. Absolutely. Hence why I was trying to think of doing flat felt seams. Right. But... No, I don't think so. No, not even if I squeeze it. No. I feel like the most I'm getting is out of your tape back. Probably. And there's, and it's, tape there's there. still some leakage, but. But it's natural. In, in, not, not. Yeah. Boop. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. We modified the outside seam of the legs so it was a little less bow legged, and then inflate the suit again. And I start figuring out where I want the visor to go. And Felicia starts preparing some of the Velcro to hold the suit shut instead of all that tape. I copy the basic shape of the visor onto some paper to make a pattern. And Felicia starts to remove a seam down the left side. The Velcro strip will go over there instead because the backpack on the suit will make it difficult to put a seam on the back. I modified my visor pattern to have darts in the corners. Round visors can have corners, right? When the darts are sewn together, the visor should be more dimensional and not just a flat window. The first layer is the thinnest, lightest vinyl sheet that I could get at a fabric store. I want more than just a clear window, so I picked up this shimmery net as a visor color. This was my original idea for the visor, mostly. I hadn't picked what type of shiny fabric, but this I happened to find, I thought it was great. That way I could get the kind of glittered visor look, but I could still see through it. But I knew I was gonna need a uh, thin vinyl so it would actually be airtight. Felicia had a fantastic suggestion, and we got some colored tool to add the cartoon shading as well. So I'm gonna cut out two more pieces of some tool. So I got blue and gray. That's real subtle. That's nearly impossible to see on, on this. I don't think this is gonna do much of anything. Well, all right, I'll give it a shot. I cut a hole in the blue. That'll let the white shimmery stuff be the highlight. And then I cut a crescent of the gray to be the shadow. I have two layers of each color, the glitter fabric and the vinyl. All of them need to be pinned together. Then I sew around the outside but I noticed something when I was getting ready to close up the darts. I did. So my glitter part, wrong side out. Ah, nuts. <laughs> wow, that's bad. I stopped the camera here, thinking I was gonna start over, but after checking how well I could see through the glitter stuff, which I can't, I decided I just needed the colored net and ditched the glitter fabric. Another trip to the fabric store and have a brighter blue color and a black for the shadow. A full sheet of white shiny tulle is the base visor. Everything is pinned to the vinyl again. And sew the edges and close the darts and trim off the excess. There we go. Dimensional, I like it. Got the colors, can you see colors? Yeah, you kind of can, even here. I mean, just the person's gonna be obvious as heck inside, but that's okay. Because you'll be able to see, and I can actually see with this. I can actually navigate and see. With the glitter one, I couldn't see. With two layers, three layers, I couldn't see. This, this is fine. It'll be a little lower probably, but still, this is fine, great. I then trimmed the edge with some black bias tape. The visor is outlined black in the game, so I can outline mine too. This will also allow the visor to be top stitched onto the completed suit. Then we can cut the colored nylon away from inside so I can see out. There. Half inch bias tape. And I've got a frame for my, for my visor. That's awesome. This will look great against the color, I bet. The backpack is easier. So I've got the back sheet and the four sides for the backpack. It's not very big. But it looks like it's big enough. 
sew the sides to the back panel, and close the four corners. We talked about adding some support to the bottom, where I want to put the fan. I cut a strip of 2mm HD foam to fit inside the bottom shelf. I cut a smaller strip of nylon to go over the foam. So I'm going to center line that way. I want to center line this way. I trace the circle of the fan cover onto the new piece so I can stitch around the area before I cut it out. I sew it all in place with another panel of ripstop over the foam. I'm going to use more bias tape to cover the edges of the backpack. It took one and a half packages of bias tape, or about four and a half yards, to trim both the visor and the backpack. I can trim two suits with just three packs of bias tape. Felicia is back, and this is now day four. She's pinned the visor where we wanted it, and is just top stitching it right in place. The visor is in place, and it works just fine. Next, we plan where the backpack needs to go. Sewing the backpack on after the suit is nearly complete is really kind of difficult. Felicia had to fight with the full suit as she sewed the pack only to the back panels and did not catch anything extra in the seams inside. With my next suit, I'll sew together the front half and then the back half and attach the visor and then the backpack to each and then stitch the two halves together, gluing in the feet last. That should be a lot easier. I need to add holes in the back of the suit so the fan can blow air in from the backpack. So I trace a set of four and then cut out the circles. The strips that are left will help keep the backpack in its square shape so it won't just balloon out when it's inflated. I can reach inside through the holes and we can install the fan right yeah, away. That's nice. We check the look and it's looking pretty good. This looks like a lot of the crewmates from the game. I climb into the suit and she helps me get the Velcro seam closed and it's working. I wanted to make an inflatable suit of my own for years and it's fun that this looks like the same guy. Sorry the table's still in the way, I will get a better shot in a moment. Two changes that I'm going to need to make next. I need to add some suspenders inside so the top of the suit isn't just sitting on my head. And I'm going to add some closing armholes because the suit will be a lot more fun and functional if you can stick your hands out of the front and point out the imposter. The pattern has been modified again and I start cutting out a new suit. Knowing all the parts and where they go makes this second, or is this the third suit, easier to sew together. The big change this time is I sew the front and the back as separate parts, attach the visor and the backpack, and then sew the two halves together. I can add in the top circle and suspenders, and I have a second suit in about four hours. Most of the materials I use for this project I picked up locally. I put a list in the description. Okay, this is pretty cool. I'm pretty excited to have an inflatable costume. I've never been in one of those T-Rex costumes before, and this is fun. Uh, one thing that didn't occur to me that makes a lot of sense if you think about it, because the ripstop nylon doesn't allow the air to escape easily, it gets pretty warm in here. Uh, but I do have fresh air coming in because I got the fan blowing up from the back of the, uh, of the backpack, so I'm not gonna suffocate, but yeah, it gets pretty warm pretty quick in here. Other than that, this is really cool. Now I had a good idea uh, this just a minute ago when I'm putting the suit on again about how I can fix the legs to make it better. I mean, these foam feet, they work, right? But if I was to sew an interior pant leg inside of the, of, the, of the one that would hang down, and that inside one has an elastic band. So think about it, you have two pant legs, one that actually goes around your ankle, and then the other one that just hangs down and goes to the floor and looks like your foot. Then you could run around with just your shoes on, which would be a lot safer and a lot nicer than these silly foam pads. So uh, I'm not gonna glue anything on, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace these with some inner um, pant legs and see if that works any better for me. Now, with all the different colors that we have of the crew uh, and all the different color options you've got for these costumes, mashups are gonna be a lot of fun. Just think about it. I'm orange currently. I could easily be an X-Wing fighter pilot or aperture science test subject. Any of the other colors could be mixed up with anything you can think of. You know, green could easily be Link. This would be really kind of fun to have a little, those, like this weird Among Us mashup. But having a whole crew of these guys running around at a con, I think is gonna be a lot of fun. And I'm really glad that I've got three colors currently, and with a couple of hours of work, you know, five, uh, I can have another one. So this is pretty exciting. What do you think, guys? Now I know there's gonna be lots of different ways that you can be ejected into space, but this is how Odin makes.
Is it real? No, it's not. Hi, is the head of the household there? No, we're all dead. I want to thank IC Cook, Jonathan Wiesner, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. You totally shouldn't trust Red.